morning, everybody, and a very warm welcome to St. James this morning. Uh, and I'd like to welcome Reverend Janice Smith. It's lovely to have you with us, and I hope you'll enjoy your time with us here this morning. Thank you for plugging another gap for us. It's, it's lovely to see you. Right, just a few quick notices. Um, um, first of all, um, Terry's funeral uh, will take place here at St. James on the 27th of March, and that'll be at 11.30 a.m. Um, pizza prays uh, tonight at 4.30, uh, so please pray. I'm not going to do the for the pizza praise project. I'm not going to say that. Uh, but yeah, please pray for that uh, this evening. Sunday home group in the hall tonight at seven o'clock. All the welcome. Um, now next Sunday, Palm Sunday service will be a bit shorter for a couple of reasons. Um, one, well, really the, um, the Reverend who's, who's covering next week has to uh, be somewhere else fairly pronto, but um, we've got um, Father Michael will be blessing the palms over the, at the memorial gardens um, at 10.15. Uh, so we'll have a, a shorter service here, and then if people want to go across and uh, receive a blessed palm, that would be uh, the plan anyway. Um, Holy Week, Monday the 25th, there's the Stations of the Cross over at uh, Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And um, if anybody would be interested in just doing a brief reading alongside Neil, who, who will uh, be doing one of them, um, if you could see myself or, or Neil. Um, it, it's not an awesome task, it's just getting up and, and joining in with the other couple of churches. Each church does a couple of readings. So that's the Stations of the Cross. And we have the Walk of Witness on Good Friday, Friday the 29th. Uh, we meet at Our Lady of Mount Carmel at uh, 10.30 and we visit each of the churches um, where there's a short service and um, a, not a play exactly, but we do sort of say a few words. So if you, you want to volunteer for a part in that as well, that would be very welcome if you're able to join the Walk of Witness. Uh, we're planning to have an open church on um, Easter Monday and Tuesday, the 1st and 2nd of April. Um, so we need, um, if we're going to do that, we need people to volunteer to just spend an hour here or whatever. Um, so if there's some rotors at the back if you feel able to join up for that. Um, thank you for everybody who came to the work morning yesterday or, and fog. Got a lot of jobs done. Uh, and also thanks for everybody who delivered some um, leaflets to the new houses as well. So I'll now hand you over to Reverend Janice. Let's have a look. I'll have a look at you. Right, it's not working. Oh, well, I'm not working. There we go. Uh, I think that's probably me. me. Oh. oh, and there was light. Right, okay.
our worship. As we begin our worship, let us just take a moment of silence before we begin. Let us remember that we are in the presence of God as we always are. He's here now with us. We can open our hearts and minds to him. Amen. So we begin with our first hymn, Praise to the Holiest in the Height. Please stand if you are able. The Lord be with you. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Please, please sit down. 
come to that part of the week when we look back uh, on our week, perhaps at the things that we've said that we shouldn't have said, or perhaps the things that we should have done and didn't. So we just take a moment of silence. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Amen. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now have... Today's reading is taken from Hebrews, chapter 5, verses 5 to 10. Um, just prior to this reading, um, there is talk in the chapter about how priests are chosen. They do not self-appoint. So Christ also did not take upon himself the glory of becoming a high priest. But God said to him, you are my son, Today I have begotten you. And, in an, and he says in another place, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, and was designated by God to be a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus predicts his death. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip, in turn, told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, 
well, the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honour the one who serves me. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, the voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us bow our heads in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please sit down. Well, I don't know about you, but I have trouble with passwords. Thinking them up or trying not to use the same one all the time because that's the one I can remember. Uh, and entering them correctly, oh, which was a capital letter and which was lowercase, no, that's, you know. However inconvenient these passwords are, uh, they do allow us access to everything from our bank accounts uh, to our online shopping. I even have a password for one of my grandchildren when I pick him up from after school. So very important, I don't forget that one. Although I do wonder, would they really keep him? You know, are they going to keep him overnight and send me away? You know, if I forgot it. Well, the Greeks didn't have the password for Jesus, so they approached Philip. After all, Philip had a Greek name, so he must be helpful to fellow Greeks, surely. The Greeks were just visiting for the Passover, Whether they were converts to the Jewish faith or more likely uh, seekers of truth, we don't know. They had obviously heard about Jesus. And who wouldn't? Who wouldn't have in Jerusalem that particular Passover? Jesus was the man who had come riding into Jerusalem, acclaimed by the crowds. Everyone wanted to see and hear what Jesus had to say. Clearly, the Greeks didn't have the right password for Philip to allow them access to Jesus. But to be fair, he doesn't reject them out of hand, so he goes to Andrew. Now, Andrew was a keen bringer of people to Jesus. Andrew was the one who told his brother, Simon Peter, about Jesus with the words, We have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And with that, he brought Simon Peter to Jesus. Now, I think that's the shortest testimony I've ever heard. And it was so effective. So on the day that Jesus was called by Jesus to be a fisher of men, Andrew went into action straight away and brought one. And straight away... Andrew and Philip went to Jesus. Andrew is the natural evangelist introducing people. He has no hesitancy. He knows what to do immediately that Philip approaches him. What Andrew is doing is making Jesus available to those who are seeking. Just as Alpha and other courses do today, these courses open the way for seekers to find Jesus, just as Andrew did for the Greeks. And if you think 
that there are not the seekers today as there were when, uh, then we should pause. We should pause and remember that Nicky Gumbel, the one who made Alpha the go-to evangelism course uh, for inquirers or seekers, has never, he's never thought that. At his retirement from Holy Trinity Brompton in 2022, the following statistics were given on the screen. First, there were images of people flashed across the screen as one incredible statistic after another scrolled past. 30 million people introduced to the Christian faith through the Alpha Course. Are you one of them? Do we have any here today who's been affected by Alpha? I won't let... I won't ask you to stand up, but I certainly have. In every Alpha course I have run, with each one, I personally have learned something new about Jesus. And I have seen people move from inquirers to people of faith. Alpha has been used across 140 countries and in 170 languages. Nikki introduced a Bible reading app which has fed spiritually two million people. And people were physically fed by the two million meals that were delivered during the pandemic from Holy Trinity Brompton alone. Those are statistics, incredible statistics, but I'm only going to take one fact out of them. The fact is, those statistics prove beyond doubt, beyond all doubt, that there is still a hunger and a thirst for the truth of the Christian faith. Even today, even today, when sometimes, sometimes we doubt ourselves and our faith and think that people don't want to know anymore. You just have to remember one number, 30 million. 30 million people have taken part in an Alpha course. I can't forget it, 30 million people. It means we are surrounded completely by opportunities to share our faith. And there are opportunities out there in Silston, in your schools, in your nurseries, not only in your new housing, but in your established housing, in your residential homes, and in people who are simply curious, why do you have a faith? What is faith? How does it work? Jesus welcomed the Greeks, but Jesus was no sugarcoater of the faith. He did not say to the Greeks, come to me and I will give you an easy life with no troubles. He told them openly that he was going to die. Now, death is difficult for those who are left behind, but for the disciples who had to carry on without Jesus, it seemed impossible. And how much more difficult for those who had only just heard about Jesus, like the Greeks. Time is short, but Jesus still makes time for the Greeks, these non-believers. Greeks were traditionally seekers after truth. So what did Jesus have to tell them and what did he have to tell us today? Jesus says that his hour has come. The event that all history had been building up to, the one main event that Jesus had come to earth for in the first place to be the saviour of humankind. It was now time. The truth, which the Greeks had sought over many thousands of years, was now revealed. The barriers would be down through the death of Jesus. These Greeks would be the first fruit of the harvest of the Gentiles that were to be brought into the kingdom of God. The message he was telling them was that he, Jesus, was the one kernel of wheat.
by going to the cross to die, be buried and be resurrected to new life. If he did this, then there would be a great harvest of souls now and in future generations. And that harvest of souls was brought by Jesus' obedience and God's love for us. Everyone in this church today and everyone outside it, waiting like the Greeks to be introduced to Jesus. The gospel of good news that Jesus came to bring was for everyone. Not just the Jews, it was for everyone. And today that gospel and his love is still true. And it is for everyone, not just a select few. Like Andrew, let us be the ones known as keen bringers of people to Jesus. There are no passwords to gain access. There are no barriers. No one is turned away by his sacrifice on the cross and resurrection from the dead. Jesus is available to all. No password required. Amen. Not sure if this is the right place, but I think we're going to sing When I Survey the Wondrous Cross now. Yes? <laughs> Can we? Yeah? Good. <laughs> Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, 
his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now have our prayers. Please sit down. Led this morning by Steph. Thank you. So the response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. So Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. Circle us, Lord. Circle our troubled world with your peace and protection. Fill those who live in areas of conflict with a real sense of your presence. We pray for food for the hungry, water for the thirsty, healing for the injured, comfort for the bereaved, and protection for those who are trying to help them. We lift them to you in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Circle us, Lord. Circle our nation with the values of your gospel. In these difficult times, when the conflict in Gaza is creating divisions in our own country and releasing prejudice and hatred, we pray that our politicians and leaders choose their words wisely and seek always to heal, not to create further division. In the silence of our hearts, we pray for peace and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Circle us, Lord. Circle our community here in Silsden with your loving presence. We pray especially this week for the residents and businesses of New Road, Airview, Millfield Court, and Elliott Street. May they encounter your love this week as they go about their daily lives. And if they are prompted to visit St. James, perhaps for the first time, may we be able to help them find you. We pray for all those seeking you in our community, as Reverend Janice said. We pray for your blessing on our outreach to the new houses, and we pray for receptive hearts amongst those who received their bags and invitations to pizza praise yesterday. We lift them all to you in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Circle us, Lord. Circle St. James Silsden with the light of the gospel. As the parish brochure and advertisement for a new vicar go live, we pray for discernment for those considering applying. And we pray, Lord, that you raise up the right person to come to Silsden and take us forward. During this time of vacancy, we ask you to bless us with continued energy to do your work. We lift to you Reverend Janice and all our visiting clergy. We give thanks that they are here and bring new insights for us each week. We thank you for the families who regularly attend Pizza Praise, and we ask that you continue to bless this service and bring all those who attend closer to you. We lift to you those members of this church who are grieving, who are in pain, who are ill. Surround them with your tenderness. 
Give strength to those in pain. Hold the weak in your arms of love and give hope and patience to those who are recovering. We lift them to you in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Circle us, Lord, our church, our town, our nation, our world. Circle us all and never let us slip outside the enchantment of your grace. We say together the words on the slide. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you are able, please stand for the peace. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Uh, we now sing My Song is Love Unknown, uh, and while we are singing this, uh, the uh, gifts will be taken. Uh, no, they don't. No, you don't. You wish to make a gift to the church, table at the back is the place to do it on your way out, and there is an electronic thing for your card, so you can't say, I've got no cash. You've got your card with you. <laughs> right.
With this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to his table, we bring. We shall remember Jesus. Please sit down or kneel. Thank you. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And now we give you thanks because for our salvation, he was obedient even to death on the cross. The tree of shame was made the tree of glory, and where life was lost, their life has been restored. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life, and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, he comes. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. We say together, 
we do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
And so we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is We Sing the Praise of Him Who Died. Christ crucified, draw you to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.